Hey coach, I uh, hope you're liking the video. If you are, subscribe down below. That would be awesome. Um, that will help us uh, get noticed all over the web. Also, make sure you subscribe and hit that little bell up above. You get a notification when we put a new video up every day. That's good. Also, make sure you go over and check out teachhoops.com for coaches who want to get better. All right, welcome to Coach Unplugged. I I stopped about episode 500 trying to number which one this is going to be, but uh, it's over a thousand. So, gosh, I I got to figure at some point as a statistician, I got to figure out exactly how many hours I've spent podcasting. That's a lot of talking, Coach. That's a lot. That's a lot of talking. talking. Yeah, but you know what it is? It's a lot of talking, but it's also a lot of learning. What I've learned, right. in, oh, it's crazy. The amount I've learned over the last four or five years doing this, I mean, yeah, I would, yeah. The problem is I've, I, I have piles and piles of all these notes and then it's like, oh, I got to go through all these things because they're so valuable. And how am I going to use them? And how am I going to use them? Yeah. And, and we were, in, in previously we were talking about Gene Nerd. I've stolen some of his stuff. Like his stuff, I've I wish I could do it all. I wish I, I could know. do it I've all. used some of his stuff. Now, some of it, it's like, it's like, that's what I tell coaches is, um, and we'll jump in here in a second, is uh, you got to take a little bit of everybody and right. then make you. That's the key. All Maybe. right. So, Alan, I'm going to have you kind of, Coach Griffin, I'm going to have you kind of describe yourself, or not describe mm -hmm. yourself. I'm going to have you introduce yourself and yep. then just kind of walk us through your basketball journey, kind of how you got into coaching, um, you know, kind of how all this progressed. And then, um, and then sure, we've got yeah. a couple, we, we talked pre-talk topics before we came on, but uh, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll dive into a couple of those too. So I'm going to so, yeah, yeah. I'm Alan Griffin. I'm in my 15th year of uh, education. I was be my 12th year of being head basketball coach. And um, I grew up a coach's son. My, my dad was a varsity basketball coach and later turned principal. And um, so when I went to college, like I really didn't know people could make money in other ways. Like I thought everybody had to be a teacher and a coach. And so um, that's what I gravitated towards. And uh, I actually played football in, in college at Carson Newman College and played for um, one of the legends named Arch passed away a couple of years ago, but was very winning Division two football coach. And um, so when I left Carson what position Newman, did you play? Well, I was probably one of the best athletes on the field coach. I was a punter. Um, ah, ah, so, ah. you know, and you can tell with my physique now, I mean, just, it, it runs through me. <laughs> so, what, so, so before we dive into our uh, post-college is, yeah. so what did you take from that experience that's helped you in your basketball coaching? I learned that coaches have to make some really tough decisions that aren't personal at all. And, um, you know, I was, uh, I was a, a, a coach's favorite. I was a team's favorite. I was, you know, the jovial punter. And uh, my, I spent, I did it right. My freshman year, I redshirted. My sophomore year, I worked my tail off thinking that I'd get a chance my junior year. I was, uh, you know, I, I stayed. I took summer classes going into my junior year. Worked harder than I ever worked. Got in the best shape of my life. And, uh, the transfer comes in, you know, and um, coaches coaches made that decision for, for me to be the number two and uh, something that I had to either uh, make a decision for myself was do I still want to be a part of this team knowing that uh, we're the same year, we're both juniors, you know, I'm going to be his number two for the next two years. Do I want to, do I want to keep doing this or just have fun and be a college student and, and I'm very happy that I decided to keep doing it, try to be a great teammate. And, um, you know, for, for a long time, I was mad that it was more than a decision of he was better than me or, or vice versa. Um, but, you know, the coaches had to make the decision for what was the best for their team. And, you know, all four years I was there, we were a top 10 team in the nation. So, you know, I learned pretty quick, like it was a business and, those coaches loved me and cared for me, but they had to do what was best for their football team. I, I, I had this discussion with my team and my students in this. <laughs> so the first time I hand back a test or an assessment, I'll, I'll give the speech. So let me explain what I'm doing here. I graded these tests. This is not a personal reflection on you as a human being. Yeah. All this is, is 
a snapshot of where you are right now. Like and an opportunity to improve. And an opportunity to improve. So if you have a C, it's not because Mr. Collins doesn't like you. So I, I always spell that out the first time, but it's the same with the, with a team. It's like, and I think the players get it faster than the parents. Absolutely. Cause the, the kids are there. They see it they, deep down in their heart. They know that Billy or Susie or Sally is better than them. Yes. Deep down in their heart. They know. Yes. Um, when you have, I'm going to tell you something else. When your teams are better, it's easier. Oh yeah. That when your teams are average or below average, then, then it's like, it, it, like you're losing I, anyways, coach. Right. Well, I, I've had to cut less people as we've gotten better. Yeah. I've had less problems as we've gotten better because I've coached NBA guys or I can't like 70 collegiate guys. They all know this guy's better than them. And right. they also know that. So you're right. When they look in the mirror and they really say, am I better than this guy? They go, I'm not probably yeah. they'll never yeah. admit it, but they, they know. And five years after they graduate, they definitely know. Um, yep. <laughs> but see, like, like me, uh, 15 years after my college career, my memory is starting to fade. And I think next year I might be the quarterback of, the, of that team. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you know, I get better as I get older. Right. And the thing is, that was the way I, for, for, for me, you know, shoot, there was the, my sophomore year I was starting. My junior and senior year, I didn't start. I was still captain of the team. I was still a leader, but right. there were better players. Now, did I think that at the time? Eh, probably not. And I, I wasn't happy about it. I still played a lot, but right. it was like, why am I not starting? It's like, so it's like, yes, I think those lessons, I think that's why, I think that's why high school and collegiate and youth sports are so important. Because mm -hmm. um, those lessons that you and I learned, you almost got to learn them by hard knocks. <laughs> really and truly. And that's the, that's the great thing about sports is, you know, the, it truly is the, the memories that you create, the friendships that you create and those lessons that you get, you know, it, it's, it's a lot better to get knocked down on a playing field or, or you know, learn a hard lesson on a playing field than get into your first big kid job and get canned. Right. You know, these are, and then how are you going to deal with it? It's like, yep. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'll use my son because he never listens to this. He didn't, he got waitlisted from his first school that he wanted to go to, but then got into a better school in the next, like that, you would, he was crushed. He wanted to go there so bad. And that was the school. And he got waitlisted. Who knows if he'd have gotten in, but something better opened up. So he learned the lesson that you, you it, it was like perfect. It was almost perfect the way it kind of uh -huh. worked out. Um, so, okay. So what happened? So you, after school, after you graduated, then what happened? Yeah. So <laughs> I went to school to be, become a history teacher and a, a coach. Okay. First of so all, my I, advice would have been don't become a history teacher. Cause it's like being a phi ed teacher. There's a lot of those. Absolutely. So <laughs> I did the opposite coach my junior year of college. I decided I was going to change my major to religion. Okay. Okay. So I'm Catholic. I go to a Southern Baptist college. I changed my major to religion. So of course there are just endless job opportunities for me with a degree in religion. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be a priest, I guess. But it, the, the thought had crossed my mind. <laughs> um, but so I graduate and still the only thing I want to do is teach and coach. That's right. still the only thing I want to do. So I was very, very lucky. I sent uh, resumes out to every Catholic high school in the Southeast United States. Every Catholic high school got a resume from me. And I got a call from uh, Pacelli Catholic in Columbus, Georgia. And got an interview. Got Where's Columbus, Georgia? Columbus, Georgia is in the Southwest corner. It's, it's right on the Alabama lawn. Okay, okay. Okay. Yep. Frank Thomas is from there. There's, there's, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I just, I, I don't know. I know the big cities. I just didn't know where that was. Yeah. Okay. Yep. It, everything's about two hours from Atlanta, anyways. So it's the <laughs> yeah. southwest corner of Georgia. Um, and well, I go, first of all, nothing's two hours from Atlanta. Well, not with the traffic. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> it it's is two hours to get to the perimeter. It is the worst. The I have driven in every big city. I've driven in New York City. I've driven in Chicago. I have driven in la atlanta is horrible 
<laughs> and if you can tell me where Atlanta starts and where it ends, that I, it's, well, I know. bought the Sun Pass because I taught from Florida for about three weeks during the pandemic because I was yeah. virtual. I bought that little Sun Pass and used that little um, bypass that you have. Yeah, yeah. Around Atlanta. Now that saved me about an hour. Yeah, and sometimes it'll completely backfire on you. That thing will be backed up for hours. Really? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So is there, there's no way for me to get from Madison, Wisconsin to Southern Florida without going through Atlanta. I'm, it, I'm in Northeast Georgia and there's no way to get to Florida without going through Atlanta. I mean, it's just that you got to go through it. You got to get, through is there it. a good time to go through it? Yeah. If you, uh, if you go on Sunday morning, you'll fly through Sunday, Sunday morning. Okay. That's about it, though. <laughs> I mean, I have woken up from, from Sanibel, which is south of Fort Myers, at like 2 a.m. to try to get around it. It doesn't help. doesn't matter. No, no. doesn't matter. I can leave at 7 a.m. doesn't matter. Yeah. Like Rush hour traffic seems to go from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. I mean, there's, there's no good no good way. Okay. So. so now I know where that is. Okay. So, yeah. so, you, so you, got, you got a job there then? Yeah, I, I started, and it was a... It was the best teacher prep program I could have ever asked for. Um, you know, it was a small school, 200 kids, and I was brought in as an assistant football coach and a middle school basketball coach. Okay. And um, the following year, the the basketball, the varsity coach at the time left, and you know, small supplements, you know, it was not a state school, so no teacher retirement, you know, little benefits. Um, they had a hard time finding somebody. So, I'll do it. You know, right. 20, I was 22 years old. So I thought I was good. It's a vow of poverty to take some of those jobs. To be honest yeah. With you. Yes. Yeah. And, um, but it was, it, it was the nine best years I have could ever imagine. Love those people in that time. And, you know, I, I agree with that program and we went from having very few players and no success to making a run into the lead eight and, and having, you know, kids that, you know, I, I'll treat as my sons forever. So, right. um, and then I, after being there for nine years, you know, I, I realized that we, it was time to start making a little, money. had two kids. Um, right. uh, so in that time, while I was at Pacelli, I was also became the athletic director. Um, and so that was kind of my day was being an athletic director and a coach. And so as I start looking at getting into the public school side of things, um, I, I found and got a job as an athletic director in uh, Northeast Georgia at White County High School and um, took that job and thought that I was ready to be an administrator and thought that I was ready to, um, or I told myself I, I'd be okay not coaching. And I, the first day I went to work there in the summer and I didn't get to go to practice afterwards. I went home and I told my wife, this, this isn't it. I got a coach. <laughs> and so, um, I stayed there for two years and after two years, I had to, had to coach back and, and, uh, was really lucky. Um, got a job late and, um, Gainesville High School in Gainesville, Georgia, big 7A school, 2,300 kids. Um, got the girls' job there and uh, got on as a school counselor there. And uh, going into my fourth season now and, and, and love the school. Did love you have people. to get a special degree to be able to do that to do Georgia? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I have a master's in school counseling. Okay. Okay. So I and what about the AD? Was... Do you need an AD degree or is there anything for that? So... No, um, okay. a lot of schools in Georgia are turning to administrators to be athletic directors. You know, 20 years ago, the athletic director fault or the head football coach was fault athletic director. And that changed and we've seen schools just name sole athletic directors. And now it's starting to become assistant principals who also have athletic director duties. So those assistant principals, they're just, have they're just giving you, they're, they're not paying you anymore. They're giving you more stuff to do. That's exactly right. That sounds like that's a, like in our district too. It's, a, it, it's like that everywhere. Yep. yep. <laughs> so, um, all right. So, so, um, 
so were you coaching you were coaching boys at Pacelli? Yeah, I was coaching boys in Columbus and I uh, coached them for nine years. And, um, you know, I, I've never really cared boys or girls basketball. I right. just wanted to coach, and, um, you know, got lucky enough to get the, the girls job here at Gainesville. Right. So tell me, uh, tell me what the hardest, what, what were some obstacles when you took over the newest job? Well, our numbers were real low. We, okay. we had, we had real low numbers. Um, when I took the job, there were six kids in the program. How many? Um, six. Six. <laughs> okay. I had, I had to have you repeat that like six. Okay. That might be a record. All right. Yeah. Then. So, so that's obviously an obstacle. Um, yeah, and you know it was really to to no fault of anybody. It just you know in uh, injuries and kids just falling in love with with different activities and um, you know so I, I tried to get in there and, and talk kids into playing, and which we did. We've grown the program to to over twenty now, and um, just lost a big senior class, so we're we're kind of starting over again a little bit. And uh, so so what what kind of feeder do you have so we're a one high school system with one middle school um okay. and then we have the the park and rec department who is has just started ba a basketball program within the last three years and uh okay wow okay <laughs> So do you know what you, you basically know every year what you have coming? Yes. Yes. For the most part. Yes. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're, we're about an hour outside of Atlanta. So, you know, we do have some kids moving in and out, but for the most part, we, we know our kids. What's the biggest, uh, what's the biggest employer in your town? Uh, it would be the, the hospital um, or, or uh, we're a big chicken factory town. Got several, several poultry plants in in our in our city. You got to do the Chick Fil A, man. You got to get your chickens. Got to get all that. <laughs> yes, and there are plenty of Chick Fil A's. Absolutely, I bet there's plenty of Chick Fil A's. Um, so talk about. Well, let's talk about what you sent me when when you filled out the questionnaire about your style. I'd love to dive yeah. into that and get your so, thoughts on that. When uh. Like I said at the beginning, I, I was a coach's son. So my first job was, all right, dad, what did you do? And he was, you know, he was, he always saw his own, his own defense. He, he made his hay in the 70s and 80s, um, slower, slower style of ball. So, you know, that's kind of what I took into my first couple of, of seasons and um, actually saw a coach running the LMU system and loved what he was doing. You know, I love watching team high school teams score 110 points and playing 10 kids and, you know, getting after it. So got, got connected with him and learned the, the LMU break. And that was the first time I actually so felt give me, like I Give me the play. summary of the LM, LMU system. Give me the cliff note version of it for the cliff listeners. Cliff note version, you're sending, you're sending the two down the, we send the two down the right side if our, Point guard can rip it out of the basket as soon as we see hands on the other end of the court. We're making a, a pass, half court pass. That two has the green light to shoot the three at any moment. Um, run the five to the to the basket. Um, you know, so it's it's a rip and run. We're we're trying to get a shot up within seven seven eight seconds. Um, and and really what I loved about it is you could really capitalize and run the break off of a made basket. You know, it, it just wasn't a uh, system to run off of a miss and transition opportunity. So we turned, we, we turned after a basket into a transition opportunity. Um, if we were running, running the ball hard and getting it up the side. I love that. Cause I've been playing with that. I think we're going to be doing part of that. So the key is that first seven seconds. Mm -hmm. It, it, yeah. you, you have the time right because yeah. that is the best shot you're going to get. That is the best shot you're going to take. And in high school basketball, how, how you know, from in my experience with, in, in high school basketball, and I've always coached really great kids, but regular athletes. Okay. So 
if a regular high school athlete holds the ball longer than two dribbles, where are they going to get? A lot of times the other team's going to get the ball. You know, That's so right. I, I felt like I had more control running the LMU system than I've ever had control running anything else, which, right. sound, which was my biggest surprise going into the system. Um, I thought I was going to lose control going into it, but I actually gained some. Just because we got so programs. Explain how you so explain what you mean by gain some. I knew the shots we were going to get every time down the court. I was able to put, and I had the pieces. You know, high school ball, everything's about the pieces. What well, gets off the bus? You know, you're. I, you know, really cut my teeth coaching football, and you know, his old South Georgia football coaches. We're going to do what we do, coach. We're going to do what we do. We're not going to worry about anybody else. We're going to do right. what we do. And we're going to do right. it well. Yeah, I hear. I, I've heard that so many freaking times. It makes my head spin. Yes. But if you <laughs> ain't got it coming off the bus, you better you better start thinking a little bit. Right. So, you know, I was I had a great point guard, and I had a, a kid who could shoot the absolute – he he was oh, – actually finished the season at Pacelli shooting 47% from the three. And uh, he was, he made, I think, 81 threes. Um, you're, you know, you're, you're the math guy. So um, that's crazy. Well, yeah. my son was, my son and his, one of his friends who were going to both play collegiate basketball. They were in the gym and they were both shooting like 60, 65% on the, on, on, on the Dr. Dish. And my son goes, is that good? I go, empty gym, no one defending you. You should be at 60, 70%. Yes. Yeah. Empty. Especially when you fall in that rhythm. Yeah. yeah. I said, that's not a problem. I said, Take 20. That's I said, was that a good day? Yeah, because you're probably if you I put a defender out there, you're probably in the 40 percent range. We can live with that, especially at the distance you're shooting from. But it's like, yeah, I and I've said this in a couple of my recent podcasts. This is, again, COVID and me having too much time on my hands. Yep. There's basically four times on a basketball court. You're on the offense, you're on the defense or you're transitioning to offense or you're transitioning to defense. Mm -hmm. These other two people don't spend practice time on, mm -hmm. right? Transitioning to defense. Mm -hmm. And what we're talking about is that, that like short window of when, you know, you probably can get 25, 30% of your shots in that transition in that first five seconds. If you, if and, you work it. And so when you do work trans, and this is what I liked about it, coach, when you do work transition defense, how do you teach it? How do shot I goes, teach it? Shot, shot goes up, yeah, or, or how do the masses teach it? Shot goes up, shot goes in the basket. Where are you going, let's say, if you're man-to-man -man defense? How are you picking up? What are you doing? Right. Well, most of them in our league, they're only sending a couple to the offensive glass, and everyone else is getting back. Yeah, getting back with their head pointed in the other direction. A lot of teams are going free throw line and out, right? Right. So I'm telling my two, you're getting, you're getting to the corner. As soon as you hit the wing, your hands are up and you're looking for the basketball. I'm telling my one, you take one dribble and and if you make eye contact, you're getting getting it to them. And my two's job was if nobody's in in your face, you shoot the basketball. So a lot of times, just in transition defense with the kid running back. What about your three? Do you have your three go to the other side? Three three runs to the left side, and he would run left block. So he's taking a big loop to the left block. And, so do you, that, and do you and do you always have them run down the same side of the court? Yes, I did, I did. Um, and one of my first I used to hate was, that. I used to hate that as a player because oh yeah, it, if I'm a two and I'm on the left side, just let me stay on the left side because I'm like. And we fought that hard when I was first when we first introduced it. We fought it hard, but I had a specialized team. I had a kid. My three is now playing Division One football as a running back. Okay. Couldn't shoot, couldn't shoot the basketball. Right. So we're gonna we're gonna take that three from the right side. We're gonna run to the basket on the left side. Yeah. See, and like uh, I'm thinking my team next year, uh -huh. and I'm thinking, man, I got like four point guards. I got like three shooters. It's like we were just talking about this as a staff, which is all of you that are listening should do. You should get together on a regular basis. Yeah. It's like we're just gonna go. Like fill a spot. If you're the first one down, go. Like I yep. don't care because and what I loved about my group in the LMU break is my four and one. I had a team of 10 guards, right? My four and one were the same kid. Whoever got the ball, got to the ball first became the four. 
the second one was curling out to be the one. One. I so, love you know, that. So those two guys were interchangeable. So what's a, what's a downfall of that system? The, the maintaining a lead because you're you're working uh, in our Sweet 16 game several years ago. We went up. I think 75 to 50 and we came out at half and we made three threes in a row. And we, I mean, we got hot um, and we were up 70 to 50 at one point and began to stretch the lead. And, um, you know, runs happen when you're a shooting team, you're going to live with the die. So, so, so the issue is how do you turn it on and how do you turn it off the side? Right. And, and you're, you're really hoping you stay on. Because right. you know you are what you work at, you are you what are. you work at. So, well, uh, and I those... we were thinking about this too because we're gonna have a bunch of guards. It's like, all right, so what? At what point do we just pull you out? At what point right. do we turn the socket? Like, okay, I've watered the flowers in the front yard. They don't need any more water. I'm gonna go turn the faucet off, uh -huh. and I'm just gonna let them sit there till tomorrow. There's a point yeah. where. I'm just going to spread you because there's no shot clock in Wisconsin. I don't think yeah. there is in Georgia. We either. just got it. It's, you just got it this we're, year. We're in year two of a three year implementation. Okay. So that that's different for the shot clock people than they're not, but I, okay, I, we haven't come up with the exact time, but like we're up 20 with four minutes to go. We're pulling you. It's over. We're pulling you out. Let's go. Yeah. We'll just and shoot when, free throws. When we got three. really good, we, that's exactly what we did. We went four corners pull them out and, and we would start playing with folks and, and there's nothing more fun to, than to score off of a four corners. Uh, oh, set. it's demoralizing. Oh, too. it's awesome. Oh, it, it's you take awesome. 48 seconds off the clock and then you score. It's like you literally, you can just you a can little back that. door layup, you know, oh, it's just back cut. It's over. like, you hear this, like oh, the air yeah. just going out of it. It's like, all right, let's get on the bus, guys. Because yeah, that's old. one of the few times I'll ever sit down coaching. When we do that, I'll sit down, cross I'll my turn legs. To my coaches that, and yep. go, turn out the lights. The party's over, baby. Yeah, and, <laughs> and I feel okay doing it because I've taken enough on the chin to enjoy the ones I get. Right, right. And the thing is, that, that for coaches that are listening, you got to have that. But then when you're on the other side, what's your plan on the other side? Like, so you know. I, I I'll follow it. I mean, I'm going to make this thing We're I'm going to get you home. So you can't go to Chick-fil-A because it closes at 10. I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm, this thing is going to take three days because I'm going to, my first thing is a one, three, one. The first thing I'll go to is my one, three, one half court. Yeah. Um, I like some run and jump. And this is, this will go down to the, when I'm, I'm in like three weeks, I'm releasing my funnel down defense, which is basically, I'm going to, I'm going to, it's basically, I'll, I'll give you the gist because by the time this goes out, it'll already be released. It's basically, we don't, we funnel to the sides. We call them, so I, we use a bowling analogy. So we, we want the ball in the gutters, which is the outside courts. We don't want it in the alley and we put you down in the strike zone, which is a short corner. And it's perfect because they just, you just funnel them there and they'll go, they'll just yeah. go. It's so, it's so great. Um, but if you look at your basketball court, my guess is there's a volleyball court on top of it, right? There is. Yep. There is. So that is the perfect marking. So we basically try to push you out to the outside of the volleyball lines. Okay. It's perfect because it's most high schools. Now, I did run into a coach like three weeks ago that didn't have it because he got his court repainted and they didn't put the volleyball lines on. I go, bless you. Bless you. But most yeah. people have it. So the, it's basically the volleyball court is 60%. And then there's 20% on the other two. If you keep them in those 20% and don't let them reverse the ball, they don't know what to do. Literally, they don't know what to do. Hey coach, I uh, hope you're liking the video. If you are, kick down below. Um, that would help us a ton. Hit the like button down below. If you want to subscribe, that'd be awesome. Hit the little bell up above. You'll get a notification every time um, one of our new videos goes live. Um, also, make sure you go over and check out teachhoops.com. Enjoy. Because they'll just go. And then yeah. the, the key is it's not pack line, but the guy that's up to, cause you're funneling the right. guys, the, there has to be a lot of help and a lot of support 
up yeah. the line. Okay. But then once that ball gets to the corner or once that ball gets to the baseline and you funnel down, the backboard starts working as a defender. Right. Because right. think about there's that space. There's about that three feet from the backboard to the end line. And they get funneled down there and they don't know what to do. It's crazy. You can run it in man. You can run it in zone. So I would think doing that, a, a huge part of it is is picking up the ball. Where you it pick is. up the ball and, yep. and how and you, then you The you key still... is one, we, we, want, we don't care which side you go down. We'd rather have you go to the left, but we don't right. care. Um, cause mo but again, I have a couple lefties on my team this year, so go ahead and do it to us. But once they get it past half court, then we, whatever side they go to, that's the side we're keeping them on. Okay. Um, and think about all offenses. What do all offenses want to do? They want to reverse the ball. The ball yeah. Right. Yeah. And then for, at least for the, the guys in our league, when you, it's like opening the candy store and saying, go ahead, you can have whatever candy you want. When you give them the baseline and say, go ahead. They go like, holy, but they don't know that we're coming. <laughs> we're going to So for you, them. Coach, is that, a, is that a whole, is that a defensive philosophy or is it a defensive? No, nope. so we run it about 40, 50% of the time. We run okay. straight man, too. Okay. Um, and then we'll do a little bit of change up. We'll run some one through one. I think yeah. you got to have, you got to have length to run that one through one really effectively. You if you're tiny you and short, it's harder to run. Um, but we'll run. I just like it because people don't, people don't practice against it so i i probably underestimated how much we run funnel but we'll run it out of our matchup too so um our like our three two matchup which mm -hmm. is perfect because everyone's kind of already in the right spots um but it you know i'm i'm full philosophically if you score on me two or three times in a row i'm changing my defense um so so phil as you say the word philosophically do you believe your defensive tempo has to match your offensive tempo and offensive style of play? Yes. Uh, I'm, but I'm I also aware. think if you're, it doesn't matter your tempo, that defense is where you can change tempo. Mm -hmm. So I really do believe, I a thousand percent agree with that because it's, it's kind of a basketball game is runs, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a feel. And sometimes right. your feel and my feel is not actually what's happening. I've told mm -hmm. this on podcasts before that there was a time in 2019, I turned to my assistant coach who's tracking and says, we got to change our defense. And he goes, stop. We just stopped them seven straight times. Well, but we, we weren't doing what we needed to do on the offensive end. So my feeling was, oh, crap, let's change. He goes, it's not the defensive end. We got to figure something on the offensive end. The defense is stopping the other team. So right. what we'll do is like, if you score on us a couple times, just to get you out of rhythm, like it might be two possessions. Let's say you came down and you scored two or three straight buckets on us. We're in straight, man. We'll go to the one, three, one for a couple. It's just enough to mess up their rhythm. Cause think about it. Once they start clicking like your teams, when you're running your LMU system, yeah. when you were clicking beautiful, Oh, it's beautiful. But right. I would have done something to try to just get you out of that rhythm. Like, right. and <laughs> you know, maybe I'd so go to a two, two, I two, think one. the hardest, the, the to me, the hardest teams to play and the teams that, you know, I just hate going in their gyms and the team, the kind of team I want to be is you have to play our style at night. So whether it's the, the break, whether it's a flex, you know, the guy the road runs the flex and he's, uh, it's, it's beautiful. You know, we'll we'll defend for 30 seconds and play great defense. But I, here's what I'm going to do to you. If you're running the flex on you, I'm trapping you. I'm doing something yep. to get you out of your rhythm so you can't run the flex. I'm going to run funnel down against the flex because yeah. you're not going to reverse the ball ever. But I am going to do something. Yes, I want to be the aggressor. I right. am going to – here's your front line. I am going to come in and just – your front line until I find a weakness. And when I do, right. I'm going to exploit it. So if I lose, I want to go down fighting. Yeah. I want more than you, you know, want to make that coach make an adjustment to beat you. Right. And the it's thing is, I change my defenses. Could I run? First of all, I'm in Wisconsin. It's like pack line heaven because of Bennett and you know, Bull yeah. Ryan and stuff. Whatever. So I could run the pack and I know how to teach the pack and I could run it really well and I could spend 30 minutes of my hour and a half or two hour practice just working on pack. I could, but what happens when pack doesn't work? 
Yeah. So I'd rather be 70% good because I don't have my guys all year. I'm not a college coach. I'd rather be 70% good at three different defenses than 100% good at one. That's my philosophy. Also, and then, you know, if I'm, if I'm in Wisconsin, how, how many nights do you play? How many games a year do you play, Coach? We can play, we can play 24. Okay, so 24 nights out of the year, how many times are you going to see the pack? A version of it, at least half. You know, and it, it, to me, that means that every coach, is, when they practice man, against their man-to-man defense, they're practicing against the pack. I don't want you to. No one's no one's running funnel down because I invented it. There you go. You got to you got to no, do something. You're gonna. So I'm gonna make you now. Are there weaknesses to it? Absolutely, and I have counters to those weaknesses. But I'm gonna make you spend some practice time when you just played on Tuesday, and now you're gonna play us on Friday. So you're gonna play Wednesday and Thursday, and you're gonna go. Oh crap! We're playing Collins. He's running the one three one, or he's running the yeah. funnel one. So I got to put that in my practice. That's, That's right. what I want you to have to do. That's right. Because so, now you're not working on other stuff. So since I'm a Georgia boy, I'll talk football for half a second. Paul Johnson's at Georgia Tech running the flex bone option option offense. Right. So, you know, Georgia, UGA has to at least beat Georgia Tech, nothing else. So when Paul Johnson was at Georgia Tech, Kirby Smart put in a flex bone session to every single practice where they're going to see that flex bone every at practice you know whether it be 10 15 minutes would it be you know but just just the fact that he had to do that was a win for right coach. it's like wisconsin and marquette you can't lose the marquette if you're the wisconsin right. coach you just don't do that yeah that's right that's yeah. right so <laughs> so you know it was funny when i got the gainesville job i actually had a very similar roster to what I left at Pacelli. So I, the, we came in and we put the break in and we started rocking and rolling. And um, I came in with a group of sophomores at the time and they picked it up well. We, we had the pieces to do it, um, had, a, had a strong season this year and it, they graduated. You know, and I, I look to what's coming. I got a great group of kids. And there's some talents and there's some strengths, but there's not the, the, I don't see. So do you have, do you have for, for, let me, let me figure out what you have. Do you have shooters? No. Do you have depth? I have, yeah, I have 10 kids who can do the same. Okay. Do, do you things. have, um, can you beat the five best teams consistently on your roster? On no. your schedule, not roster schedule. No. No. Okay. So, so now you have to be the, you have to be the um, kind of sewer. And so you want less possessions. If I'm better than you, this is a math problem. If I'm better than you, then I want more possessions because See, the long, large numbers is going to tell argue me I'm that gonna... all day long. If I had a shooter, if I had a shooter, if I had two shooters, I'd try so you gotta to get shooters. You can make shooters. Yeah. I know, yeah. You can't from you can't from August to November, but for future right. years you can always make yeah. shooters because we're, we're you know building what? them in the middle school. Kids want to shoot and they want to score because then Jane will talk to them after the game and you know uh -huh. get a right. milkshake with her. That, trust me, they all want to score. So those yeah. are that's an easy thing to get shooters. Yeah. But for the for the progression, if you're not as good, you don't want as many possessions. How long is yeah. the shot clock? 35 seconds. So you, you, you shouldn't even be looking at the clock unless it's a wide open shot to the 22nd mark, probably. Mm -hmm. I, you know, the shot, it's such a foreign concept. It's a but, stupid yeah. thing for high school. I hate it. I'm sorry. I think it takes away some creativity and it takes away uh, coaches opportunities to, to out, no, it's going to make all the games look the same, like they do yeah. on the NCAAs. So yeah. so what you should do, because it's probably relatively new in Georgia, is you should have a 2-2-1 two, two, in. Yeah, that, and that's what some kind of contain. you got to have a contain. you got to take seven seconds off that clock, so now we're at 28. Mm -hmm. So now how can I get from 28 to 7? How can mm -hmm. I get that 21 seconds off 
So then in the last seven seconds, what are they going to do? They're going to come set a pick and roll. They're going to do something. Well, when you do that, then we're going to trap you or we're going to have different calls for those last second. Because my guess is a lot of the last second things are going to be pick and rolls, ISO, clear outs. Well, great. We're going to run man until the 15 second mark of the shot clock. And then we're going to go zone. Yeah. Something. You have to counter all those things before people get good at it. Because if it's, especially if it's new, they're not, they're not good at it yet. Probably yeah. they're not good at figuring out how to work it. It's like the three point line when it came in. So this year they, um, they said, we, so the way the implementation is going is they said first year you can use it in um, tournament, like special tournaments, Christmas tournaments, holiday tournaments, all that kind of stuff. Um, second year, your regions can vote it in for region play and you can use it in tournaments. And then, the third year, it's every year. So last year, we had one holiday tournament where we used the shot clock. I didn't tell my kids until after the starting lineups were called for the game. Like, you know, that last second before we go out onto the court, I said, oh, hey, by the way, we're using a shot clock tonight. Don't pay attention to it. And, uh, you know, the first possession, we come down the court, make more passes than we've ever made before in our life. And we hear, and we go. You know, jump, jumping up, you know, what was that? Oh, okay, we might want it to be a little bit faster. So, um, it, it's a, uh, it's gonna be. A I, bit I little think forty is okay. I can live with forty. Thirty-five seems a little short to me. Yeah, well, it, it was thirty, and then I believe it was the NFHS that actually came out and recommended the the thirty-five. So, yeah, it's like you we. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, it's it's interesting. I I I th- I think schools are not going to be able to implement it the way they want because. I so I go back to my athletic director days. We, we so you're telling me now I got to fund a shot clock operator for every basketball game and a clock operator. Well, and they have to know how to push. run the shot. They need to know the rules with the shot clock. Yeah, it's you know, it, and uh, I think Alabama. We, when I was in Columbus, we used to play some games in, in Alabama, and I really liked what they did. They would send a three-man crew, officiating crew, and they'd run a two-man crew on the court, which I, is what I did not like, but that third official would keep the clock. So you wouldn't have, you know, Billy's dad over there. Yeah, but, the geez, the, 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 they have enough problems starting and stopping the regular clock. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, exactly. So it, it's going to be – it's going to be a, a, a interesting thing, but yeah, you know, basically I'm, I'm looking at going from running and gunning, getting up and down the court as many times as we can, you know, really no bad shot. Are you going to be young? We are. We are. It, so then it take is. your lumps, teach them the lessons then teach yeah. them the lessons. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We're, we're going to be young and I, I got a great group of kids who are, who are willing to learn some lessons. Right. And um, willing to do the, the hard what's work. The hard, what's the hardest thing? I always ask coaches, what's the hardest thing to teach? The, um, I, you know, it, it, it changes from, from kid to kid. But, um, you know, with, with, with the girls, I, you know, we're, we're really teaching confidence. Really, really teaching confidence. And, and you know, you can do this. And um, I think... A lot of kids today, uh, whether it be boy or girls, you know, teaching hard work and, and teaching how to be a gym rat and, you know, um, understand that being a gym rat is a really cool thing and it, it pays off. And, I know. And the thing know. is, it's like I've got a, I've got a group that's a bunch of gym rats right now and I haven't in a while. And it's like, oh, my gosh, it's so nice. Like, I got to boot yeah. them out. It's like. They're right. hoopers. Like when you get right. your hoopers, it's like, ooh, we got right. hoopers now. We got guys that can hoop. Um, yeah, I, I agree. All right, so let me go through and ask you. Um, let me ask you my rapid fire question because these are always fun to do. I always do these at the end. What's your favorite brand of basketball? The actual ball you play with? Uh, the the Wilson Evolution. Okay. One word to describe your ideal player. Tough. You go to one sporting event in the world, what would you go to and why? You better not say the Masters because that's what I probably mean. I might say that after going to the Final Four, but. Did he freeze? I think he froze. 
Look at that. How does that happen? I don't think that's me. Coach. Golf tournament. Uh, I'm that, from that would be the one event you'd pick? Yeah, yeah. It's um, so it, close, though. Really? It, it is. And I've gone several times and and we actually my family has badges in the past two years not having the opportunity to go with covid um it has it has made me want you know it's just a truly is a tradition unlike any other and it's it's a very special thing you know? is it crowded um it's very comfortable it's very comfortable you, you okay. don't you don't ever feel like you're in a, a cracker jack box okay yeah, because that's on my list. I went to the final. I've been to a couple final fours, which is unbelievable in my yeah. opinion. Um, I didn't go to. Uh, my son went to the one of the final games. I didn't go. That was really close with obviously the Bucks playing, but um, right. that doesn't. I mean, I'd rather watch that on TV. I think the Masters would be more. Um, yeah. Okay. I <laughs> I wondered if you'd pick that. What's your um, favorite pregame or postgame meal? I never eat before a game. You're about the seventh uh, coach in a row to say that. Okay. I never eat before a game. And and quite honestly, uh, if we lose, I'll go to bed hungry because I can't eat after – I really can't eat after a loss. <laughs> and truth be told, uh, after a win or whatnot, it's probably Chick-fil-A. <laughs> it is for me, too. I It, it closes at 10 o'clock, so I got to get everybody out. And it, yep. luckily, it's literally like – a three iron from our school so I can uh, make it, but it's been, it's been nine 55 and it's like, all right, you got to go. I got to get the chick before and they'll, they'll, they, they know I'm coming. So, uh -huh. um, uh, what, what does your game day look like? Like your actual day at home, like you're playing at home. What was your game day look like as a coach? So if, you know, if we play on a Saturday or if, or if we play on a day where we don't have school, I love to be the, I, I'm the first one in the gym by hours. Um, and I love to get get to the gym and, and watch a little film. Probably I'm probably behind on laundry and having to fold clothes um, for whatever reason. It's something I like to do. I'm, I like to fold clothes on game day and just kind of it's a menial task that I enjoy. You don't doing. have to think about. I know I love yeah. go, I love walking into that into that quiet gym beforehand. I know I love that, too. Yeah. Um, what's the one thing you do to relax? Uh it's changed a lot since I've had kids. Um, if, if I honestly, the most relaxing I am is to get to the gym when nobody's there in my coaching office and I can, you know, learn, watch film, whatever it be that that is the most relaxing to me when the nobody's in the gym, I'm away from love my kids, but when I get to be over, they're they're nine and five so we're Ooh, that's a tough we were we we were going to the state tournament on a regular basis when my kids were that age so we would actually have two schedules we'd have one schedule to give my wife and then we'd have my schedule my actual schedule uh -huh. and because i same thing i needed to get to the gym earlier and to relax and maybe take a nap on the couch and kind yep. of refocus so my assistant coach knew this was like my my schedule and maya's schedule and the other one kind of like, well, Steve needs to be at the gym. And I didn't really need to be at the gym at that time. But it was like, I love my kids. Too. But you really do. You really I do. do. I really did. Um, what's one coaching technique you think is important? Um, I'm big, big on whole part whole. I, I like introducing the, you know, whether it be an offense or a defense. This is what, what we're doing. We're going to break it down. And then we're going to come back together. Love that. Describe your perfect player in five words or less. Um, I already said tough, can shoot the lights out of it, can handle the basketball, um, selfless. Okay. Uh, best basketball player you have seen in person? Uh, Contavious Caldwell Pope plays with the Lakers now. Um, he was in my region for four years and, and filled it up with us. Yeah, he's pretty good. Uh, best basketball player of all time? Michael Jordan. Uh, if you could teach only one skill, what would you teach? Shooting. Shot clock, yes or no? No. Uh, if you could change one thing about the game, what would it be? Selfishness. Uh, one thing that helped you become a better basketball coach? Becoming a parent. Yeah, amen. 
Uh, charge circle, yes or no? Yes. Okay, I'm going to stop you on that one. Okay. The officials can't figure out if their foot's on the three-point line. How are they going to figure out if they're inside the charge circle or not? It's like it's, there's no instant replay in the high school level. We have a, a problem of – I've seen it more on the girls' game than, than the boys' side because a lot of coaches will have three good players. So they teach two kids to go take a charge anytime they get an opportunity. You know, uh, so you have these charge takers that are in the game and they're just okay. You know. So that, that makes that's that's actually one of the best arguments I've heard for it because I, I don't have a problem with it. I just don't think shoot, they got so if you add the shot clock, did it hit the rim, did it not hit the rim? These right. guys are accountants during the middle of the day, and then they put stripes on and try to come officiate a game. Absolutely. That's the only problem. I will say this girls are much better at taking charges than most of the boys have ever yes. Yeah, boys are worried about how it makes them look. Yeah. Um, best game you've seen in person? Oh my goodness! Um, that mm, I have no idea. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's no, a good answer. No idea. Okay. Uh, favorite quote or saying? Uh, be great. It, it's it's our team team motto, and it's just something that's grown in importance through the years. Just when you wake up, be great. When you go to school, be great. When you I like walk that. Up, that's simple. I like that. I might steal that for this year. Be great. Yep. Yeah. Um, Quarters or halves? I really like, I'm a quarters guy. I like the quarters. If you want up pace, you want halves. Yeah. We play halves. We play two 18 minute halves. Oh, really? We do. And I wasn't a fan initially. I missed the timeout, which is the break between the first and second quarter and break. But I missed that from a coaching standpoint. But the flow of the game, and, and, and like I've said before, you have to play more kids. Yeah. Because no and one can play a, That's a great minutes. thing. That helps in a lot of different areas. It does. One thing Georgia did this year is they adopted clearing the uh, team fouls at the end of each quarter, which has prevented games from being uh, free throw contests. So every quarter, team fouls go to, goes to zero, and that's made a huge impact on our game. That's it. That's an interesting like yeah, the college girls game. I like that. Yeah. Um, uh, do, 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 do you have any superstitions? Did I ask that one? I did ask that one. Did I ask you if you had superstitions? Uh, no, I used to drink like half a bottle of Pepto-Bismol in my younger days, but I've kind of. I used to eat a quart of Oreo ice cream. That was one of mine. Um, one word to describe your coaching style. Passionate. Okay. Best basketball coach of all time. Um, I'm going to go high school and say Morgan Wooten. Okay. Uh, best team of all time. Um, I, it would, I would, I would have to go with, uh, one of Michael Jordan's Chicago Bulls years. Yep. Jump ball. Yes or no, please. Yes. I, I can't watch another basketball game with them hand. You talking about the start of the game with the whole COVID thing this year and all that? Yeah. No, I'm just talking about in general. Okay, so we can have a discussion about this. Okay. I personally think the jump ball is archaic. Either we jump all of them or we jump none of them. Okay. There's a reason why. I think the visiting team everywhere in the United States should get the ball to start the game. Okay. So I'm going to come to your place. I'm going to get the ball. You get to decide how you want to defend me on that. And then when you come to my place, you get the ball. The issue I have is the officials can't throw the ball up. Very true. And they, cause they only do it once a game. So we don't ask our boys to do things or girls to do things that they've only practiced. And the thing is when you have a crew of three, uh-huh. that means one of the three is throwing the ball up. Yeah. They're not getting practice. That's my issue is like either we do it or we don't do it. Because they're not any good at it. Like, right. they don't know. My guys can jump. Well, they underthrow it. They both. That's my problem with the jump ball. And for me, it's the pageantry. Like, you you have all these pregame stuff, and then you walk out, and, uh, you know, you hand it in. It's just, I, I don't know. There's something but it, but, but about think that. about the X and O part of it. Right. Like oh, yeah. The chess it, match would be crazy. It, if, there's a lot more strategic things you can do going on the road, you know, and you get to prepare it and, um, you know, set your first possession up is, is pretty, pretty fun. I think it would be interesting. Uh, one book you'd recommend. Um, 
<laughs> so as as a religion major big fan of the bible i would go with the book of mark it was the first one the shortest one for the easy for the easier okay. as well okay yeah my son my my son worked his whole way through it during covid okay yeah it was yeah. good yeah um so my last question for everybody on the podcast is what would you tell your younger self calm down you'll get better with age coaching is a is a lifelong calling and career yes it's a marathon it's not a sprint yep <laughs> slow, slow down and enjoy it i know it's like i luckily one of my high school friends the first time we made it to state tournament he had won a state tournament in volleyball and he said steve make sure you take a lot of mental pictures make sure you enjoy the journey because it's like one of those really fun things and i'm so glad he sent me that yeah. um because it was true it's like otherwise i'd have been like how are we gonna beat this i wouldn't have i wouldn't have enjoyed the pageantry and the the actual right. experience coach thanks thank you i'm sorry for keeping you so long but i appreciate no, this was you great thank you. this was been great and thanks for being out. hey coach so glad you enjoyed the video make sure you subscribe and like go over and check out teachhoops.com for coaches who want to get better